all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel so the las vegas raiders haven't made a whole ton of moves so far in free agency tampering period we have free agency officially beginning less than 24 hours from right now but i love the moves that they've made they re-signed andre james at the center position they picked up the best defensive tackle in free agency in christian wilkins from the miami dolphins huge positional grab this is like i just couldn't believe it that they actually picked up christian wilkins and then you also got gardner Minshew yesterday afternoon to compete with aiden o'connell for qb1 so this tells us a couple of things but i do just want to say for anybody who feels a little bit underwhelmed from the raiders offseason or free agency period thus far i will explain it to you really quickly there's not as many holes that they've had in previous seasons. Like I just saw Meek Robertson, you know, left to go to Detroit. You're going to lose some players. You're going to gain some players. we got six weeks till for, uh, the draft, but free agency, like I said, begins technically tomorrow. So, you know, they're going to cut a couple of players, most notably Jimmy Garoppolo, and you're going to have over $40 million in cap space. So, you know, maybe they're not going to make a crazy huge move, you know, like a Daniel Hunter just went to the Houston Texans, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But once again, you know, we haven't seen too many Raiders moves because the Raiders didn't really need to make all that many moves. This is a team where don't let that eight and nine record fool you. When Antonio Pierce came in as the interim head coach, they went five and four and they had one of the best defenses in the National Football League. And they just had a couple of positions that they need to fill or needed to fill uh, the right tackle position. Jermaine Illuminor is officially gone. That was as expected. Josh Jacobs is officially gone. That was as expected. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Raiders free agency period thus far. But before we do, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content, along with daily Raiders videos. Raiders fans, if you could try and get this video to 250 likes, that would mean the absolute world to me. So uh, first and foremost, Gardner Minshew caught a lot of people by surprise. But then, you know, if we refresh or rewind the clock back to like, you know, a week or two ago, if I told you the Raiders were going to pick up Gardner Minshew on a decent contract, uh, I don't think too many people would be upset. You know, if you are upset, you probably don't love Aiden O'Connell being QB1 next season. I will say um, it's looking very unlikely that the Raiders are going to draft a quarterback in the first round and pick number 13, but you really never know. Uh, it wouldn't shock me if they were able to grab like Michael Penix Jr. in the second round, late second round, mid second round, something like that. Uh, but the big boards, the mock drafts, they're going to continue to change. Um, as you know, we've gotten like 24 hours past the Minshew official signing. I got to say, I don't hate it. Uh, he can play. He's a baller. He's a gamer. And, you know, he's not Patrick Mahomes or, you know, Josh Allen or Joe Burrow, but He's going to get the job done and he's going to get the job done effectively and efficiently. And that's important. Obviously, you know, you don't want your quarterback throwing too many interceptions. Aiden O'Connell struggled with that when he was thrown into the starting mix around halfway through the season. But as the year progressed, uh, he did get significantly better, you know, against Denver, two touchdowns, 244 yards, zero touch or zero interceptions against Indianapolis, 299 passing yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. And you know, he barely had to do anything in the Kansas City Chiefs win. Then we go back to the Chargers win the week before that. Uh, four touchdowns, zero interceptions, 248 yards. So his rookie season started shaky. But then in his final four games, or if we want to kind of disclude that Chiefs game because he didn't really need to do anything with the way the defense was playing and the way Zamir White played, uh, he threw eight touchdowns and zero interceptions in his final month of his rookie season. So... You know, whether it's going to be Gardner or Aiden, I just need them to get the ball to my playmakers like Devontae Adams, the best wide receiver, or one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, and Jacoby Myers. You know, Devontae Adams had a stellar season, and it's crazy because it felt underwhelming. 103 catches, 1,144 yards, eight touchdowns. Jacoby Myers also had a very underrated season, 71 catches, 807 yards, eight touchdowns. Can't forget about rookie Trey Tucker, who kind of came alive a little bit at the end of the season. I know he has some drop issues, but he was a rookie. You know, it is what it is. Michael Mayer, severely, severely underutilized, especially with Josh McDaniels in his rookie season, to 27 catches for 304 yards and two touchdowns. And I uh, technically still have Hunter Renfro, but I doubt he's going to be back. But you know, a lot of Raiders fans disagree with that statement. So wide receiver wise, the whoever QB1 is has a ton of weapons and he's got a ton of targets. And 
I'm still kind of anticipating the Raiders to make a veteran move in free agency, a one-year contract for a guy who's probably around the age of 26, 27, 28 at the running back position. Not Austin Eckler because he went to the Washington Commanders earlier yesterday, uh, but you get my point. I think they'll probably still draft a rookie running back later on in the draft, but I do think that they will get kind of this dual threat. Maybe it will be a passing receiver uh, out of the back or a passing running back out of the backfield. And, you know, the offensive line, I think, is still kind of underrated. So my point is, you know, whether it's Gardner Minshew, whether it's Aiden O'Connell, or whether I think Jaden Daniels is kind of out of the equation, out of the picture here, kind of always was a long shot when you look back at it. But, you know, they could draft JJ. Don't think it's likely. Uh, they could draft Bo Nix. They could draft Michael Penix Jr. But I do think that Gardner Minshew pickup kind of just... I feel like the, the writing's kind of on the wall here, that they like Aiden O'Connell. They like what they saw, especially in the last month of his season. And they want to bring in a veteran guy who not only is going to give competition to former rookie quarterback and Aiden, uh, but also just be good if Aiden's not good to go. And if Aiden doesn't look great in training camp and in preseason, or if he were to go down with an injury, if he was QB1. So you know, I actually really like the Gardner signing at this point in time. Now that I've had a day or so to reflect on it, I'm curious where my Raiders fans watching this feel about that at this point. And then you've got Christian Wilkins and, you know, the Raiders defense. I know you're going to, you know, we lost a piece earlier. Meek Robertson, you're going to continue to lose a couple of pieces. Uh, they're going to continue to add a couple more pieces. But once again, man, you know, that Raiders defense, which finished ninth in the NFL in opponents points per game, they did a really good job. And it's still a very young unit. And especially when we look at the defensive line now with Christian Wilkins, well, you can't double team Max Crosby every time now. You're going to have actually issues if Malcolm Kuntz played the way he did when Antonio Pierce came in and Tyree Wilson played the way he did at the end of the season. Uh, you're not really going to have any opportunities or you're not really even going to want to ever double team Max Crosby. So it really opens up the defensive line. And I think the acquisition of Christian Wilkins, who can hit the quarterback and stop the run on the interior defensive line, I really think it's going to break out or further break out Malcolm Koontz. And I think it's going to really break out Tyree Wilson. So they're not done here. They're going to continue to make moves. It's probably not going to be anything too crazy. I'll keep an eye out for a running back. Keep an eye out for some more defensive platoon players and starters. But yeah, I, I really don't hate the two bigger moves that the Raiders have made in the offseason thus far. So that's it from me. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily Raiders videos. But give me a grade rating thus far on what you think the Raiders grade would be so far in free agency. Let me know also any players that you would be looking at to pick up as of right now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your night, and we'll see you next time.